Have you ever been given a really important job? Maybe you were captain of the team, or maybe you were chosen to lead a big project at school. It's an honor to be given responsibility. It means someone thinks you're capable of important things, but responsibility is a two-way street. It comes with expectations. If you're the team captain, you're expected to lead with courage and integrity. If you're in charge of that big project, you're expected to work hard, be organized, and make wise decisions. The greater the responsibility, the greater the consequences if we fall short. The Bible is full of stories about people who were given great responsibility. Today we're going to journey back to ancient Israel and delve into one. Picture this, a time long ago when the Israelites, God's chosen people, were led by priests. These priests were entrusted with a sacred duty, a holy calling. They were the intermediaries between God and his people. Their lives were dedicated to maintaining the tabernacle, a portable sanctuary that represented God's presence among them. The priests offered sacrifices, kept the sacred flame burning, and upheld the laws God had given to Moses. They were to guide the people, to teach them right from wrong, to be living embodiments of God's love and justice. But power, like a strong wind, can sometimes lead even the best of us astray. It's a tale as old as time itself, a story of privilege abused and trust betrayed. It's the story of Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and the sacrilege and scandal that shook the very foundations of their faith. Eli walked with God, serving as both high priest and judge of Israel. The weight of those roles, leading the people in worship, guiding them in matters of law and justice, it was immense. Eli took his duties seriously, understanding the sanctity of the tabernacle and the sacredness of his role. Eli had a heart for God, and he longed to pass that heart on to his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. They were next in line to inherit the priesthood, to carry on the legacy their father had so carefully built. Now, Hophni and Phinehas, they were a different story. They grew up in the shadow of the tabernacle, surrounded by the rituals and offerings of their faith. But somewhere along the way, their hearts hardened. They lost sight of the sacredness of their calling. Instead of humility and reverence, they displayed arrogance and greed. Their hearts were filled not with the love of God, but with the love of themselves and their own desires. They grew up here in the shadow of the tabernacle. But what of it? They had their own desires, their own ways, sacredness, humility. Those were just words to them. They took what they wanted when they wanted. The Israelites, God's chosen people, traveled from far and wide to offer their sacrifices at the tabernacle. These sacrifices were acts of worship, expressions of gratitude and repentance. But Hophni and Phinehas, they saw an opportunity for personal gain. They began to take for themselves the choicest portions of the sacrifices, the parts that belonged to God alone. Their actions weren't just disrespectful. They were a direct violation of God's law, a sac Word began to spread like wildfire through the camp. Whispers of the priest's behavior reached the ears of the people, sowing seeds of doubt and anger. How could those entrusted with such sacred duties behave with such blatant disregard for God's laws? The very foundation of their faith, the trust they had placed in the priesthood, began to crumble. A crisis of faith was brewing, a storm that threatened to engulf not only Eli's family, but the entire nation of Israel. Now, the sins of Hophni and Phinehas, they weren't limited to just greed and gluttony. No, their hearts, already hardened by their disregard for God and his offerings, they were drawn to even darker desires. At the entrance of the tabernacle, women would gather. They came seeking God's blessing, their hearts heavy with burdens, their minds troubled with worries. But Hophni and Phinehas saw in these vulnerable women, not souls seeking solace, but opportunities to satisfy their lust. Can you imagine the pain, the humiliation these women endured? They came to the tabernacle seeking God's peace, only to be met with such depravity. Their faith, already shaken by the priest's disregard for the sacrifices, was dealt another blow, a wound that cut deep into their souls. Think about Eli, a man who dedicated his life to God, 
a father who yearned for his sons to walk in righteousness. Now he was forced to confront the bitter truth. His sons, the heirs to his legacy, were not just disobedient, they were wicked. Eli, heartbroken and filled with righteous anger, he finally confronted his sons. He rebuked them for their greed, their gluttony, their lust. Why do you do such things, he cried out, his voice echoing with anguish. Don't you realize that you are bringing judgment upon yourselves, upon this family, upon this holy place? He pleaded with them to repent, to turn away from their wickedness and seek God's forgiveness. He warned them that their actions would have consequences, not just in this life, but in the next. But Hophni and Phinehas, their hearts were hardened, their ears deaf to their father's pleas. God, in his infinite mercy, he saw the wickedness that was taking place in Shiloh. He saw the pain of his people, the sacrilege committed in his name, and he would not let it go unpunished. He sent a prophet, a man of God, to deliver a message to Eli. The prophet's words were harsh, a searing indictment of Eli's failure to restrain the wickedness of his sons. Your sons, the prophet declared, they have blasphemed God. Because you have honored your sons above me, the Lord declares that your house will be cut off, the priesthood will be stripped from your family, and your descendants will be cursed for generations to come. Now, across the land, a shadow was spreading. The Philistines, a powerful and warlike people, they were threatening the borders of Israel. The Israelites, they gathered their armies, preparing to defend their land and their families. Fear gripped the hearts of the people as they faced this formidable enemy. They longed for reassurance, for a sign from God that he was with them. Word reached the Israelite camp that the Philistines were winning. And then an idea born of desperation began to take hold. They remembered the Ark of the Covenant, the sacred chest that resided in the tabernacle. It represented God's presence among them, his power and his glory. If they could bring the Ark to the battlefield, surely God would fight for them, surely victory would be theirs. But fear and desperation can cloud even the clearest judgment. And so against all wisdom and against God's law, they sent for the Ark, hoping to use it as a weapon in their hour of need. The Ark arrived on the battlefield, carried by Hophni and Phinehas themselves. Can you imagine the scene? The air thick with the stench of sweat and blood, the clash of steel, the cries of the wounded. And amidst this chaos, the sacred Ark, a symbol of God's presence, being paraded about like a war trophy. The Israelites, they cheered at the sight of the Ark, their spirits momentarily lifted by a false sense of hope. The gods have come into the camp. But the Philistines, they trembled, not with fear, but with a strange mix of awe and determination. The battle raged in the tide. It did not turn in Israel's favor. The Philistines, fueled by a desperate fury, they fought with unmatched ferocity. The Ark, instead of bringing victory, it became a symbol of defeat, captured by the enemy, its sanctity violated. The Ark, captured, my sons, dead, Word of the disaster reached Eli back in Shiloh. He sat by the roadside, his heart heavy with dread, awaiting news from the battlefield. Eli, the battle is lost, the ark is captured, and your sons, Hophni and Phinehas, they are dead. The capture of the Ark of the Covenant, it wasn't just a military defeat for the Israelites, it was a spiritual earthquake. Imagine, the symbol of God's presence, the very thing that set them apart as his chosen people, now in the hands of their enemies. A silence fell upon the land, a silence heavier than the cries of battle, more profound than the lamentations for the dead. The Philistines, emboldened by their victory, they took the ark to their own temple, placing it beside the statue of their god, Dagon. They thought they had captured the god of Israel, that they had triumphed over his power. You see, God cannot be mocked, his power cannot be contained. He sent a plague upon the Philistines, a series of calamities that shook their land and their people to the core. Tumors, pestilence, death. The consequences of their arrogance and sacrilege were swift and severe. The Philistine priests and diviners, they recognized the hand of God in these disasters.
The story of Eli's sons, it's a tragedy, no doubt, but it's also a powerful reminder of the choices we all face. Eli, he was a good man, a devoted priest, but he failed in his duty as a father. He allowed his love for his sons to blind him to their wickedness. He chose to protect them instead of confronting their sin, and in doing so, he brought judgment not only upon himself and his family, but upon the entire nation. This story, it's not just an ancient tale, a dusty relic of a bygone era. It speaks to us today, reminding us that sin, it has a ripple effect. Our choices, they don't just impact our own lives. They touch the lives of those around us, our families, our communities, even future generations. The story of Eli's sons, it's a call to accountability, a reminder that leadership comes with responsibility. It's a plea for integrity, for courage to stand up for what's right, even when it's difficult, even when it means confronting the sin. The echoes of Eli's son's sins remind us that the allure of power and worldly desires can corrupt even the most sacred callings. Their story warns against complacency and how our hearts can stray from God's path. It shows that our actions, no matter how private, have far-reaching consequences. The tale of Hophni and Phinehas reflects the human condition, our vulnerability to temptation. We see their greed mirrored in the pursuit of wealth and status in our modern world. Their lust is reflected in the objectification and exploitation in our culture, and their disregard for God's laws is seen in the apathy and cynicism in our hearts. The story challenges us to examine our lives and ask, are we using our influence for God's glory or our Despite the tragedy that unfolded in Shiloh, the story of Eli's sons points us towards hope. It reminds us that even in failure, God's grace is always available. Just as the ark was returned to Israel, a symbol of God's enduring presence, we can find redemption when we turn back to him. The legacy of Eli's sons contrasts with faithful figures like Moses, who led with humility, Deborah, who guided with wisdom, and David, a king after God's own heart. The choice is ours. We can follow Hophni and Phinehas or embrace a legacy of faith and service, striving to honor God and bless others. Let Eli's son's story be a catalyst for self-reflection and an inspiration to live with humility and devotion. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and share. And if you haven't already, join our family by subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.